Hey guys, I'm Jim. I edit photos. Thanks for stopping by. Today I'm in Luminar AI and I'm playing around with the monochrome. I do like my dramatic photos. And, um, you know, if you've been here before, you know I like big colors and all that stuff. But sometimes I'm just kind of in a monochrome madness kind of mood. Some alliteration there for you. And uh, today's one of those days. And the cool thing about monochromes is you can just kind of push the stuff hardcore kind of over the top. And in color, you would just be like, what are you doing? But in black and white, People are like, oh, that's dramatic. That looks nice. Um, so that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to go dramatic. So I'm here in Luminar AI. I've already cropped this, took out a few spots. I probably missed some. I always do. And I don't care right now because this is a demo. When I'm doing a black and white, unless it's really dark, if it's really dark, I will lighten it first. But otherwise, I just convert to black and white because I want to get it in that frame. You know, uh, what am I trying to say? Get in the frame of mind of looking at it as a black and white. And here's a thing I think is really important, and that is before you convert to black and white, take a look at, uh, at the colors in your photo, which colors are dominant. To me, blue and red really stick out. A little bit of the yellow as well, but really blue and red stick out. And the reason that comes into play when you convert to black and white, you have these luminance sliders here, and you will see the red um, will come into play. Now, I'm not gonna do that right now, and also, as I adjust the luminance of the blue, comes into play in a big way in the photo. So that's something I think about is as or before I'm converting to black and white, what are the dominant colors? Because I want to come back and play with those here in a little bit. I'm going to start with Accent AI. I'm going to go ahead and pop that a little bit. Keep in mind, it's not just a brightening slider. It's not a tone AI, which I wish they would make. They used to have a smart tone. They got rid of it, and I'm like, come on, make it tone AI and bring it back. Anyway, it's accent AI. It actually does more than just brighten the image. Um, Sky Enhancer, I'm going to do a little bit of that, and I'm going to be honest here, my friends. I do not have a plan with this photo. This is kind of like an unscripted kind of edit. This is just kind of how I'm approaching things, and I want, wanted to kind of walk through it and kind of have a play and see what I come up with. And I hope it looks good because otherwise you're going to say, why did I spend this time watching Jim yap about stuff and screw up a photo? So here we go. So far, you know what? It's looking pretty good, I think. Um, I'm obviously a little bit uh, biased because it's my photo, my edit. But hey, I'm, I'm having fun and I hope you're having fun following along. I'm going to bring up some of the sharpening. Again, I go a little bit heavier here than I would um, in a color edit. But again, I think you can get away with that. Actually, I don't need to grab that paint mask. Just need to get the brush. There we go. So let me make this bigger. I'm going to go ahead and paint this into the photo. Okay, there you go. I've covered most of it. I think it looks fine. I just wanted to bring up some of the detail, make it a little bit crispier. Again, a little bit more dramatic because it is a monochrome photo. Now, once I've done those kind of things, I like to hop down to super contrast. This tool, filter, whatever you want to call it, super helpful in monochrome photos because, again, what is contrast? It's the difference between dark and light. When you don't have any color in your photo, you're dealing with the difference between dark and light. So I love super contrast. I think it is a fantastic tool, and in a monochrome photo, I think it could, you know, sort of be your best friend, right? So Again, as I've said before, with Super Contrast, I just drag the sliders a little way in all three categories, and then I come back and I play with the balance, and I just look at it and think, you know, what do I like or dislike about what the balance has done? In this case, I like that highlight balance going to the left. I'm thinking mid-tone balance is going to do the same. Yeah, to the right, it's getting really dark, so I'm going to go a little bit to the left there as well. And shadow balance is, yeah, I'm coming to the right because look at how much more dramatic those darker areas look when I drag that um, shadows uh, contrast balance to the right. So that is before super contrast, and that is with it. I, I, I think that looks pretty awesome. I'm trying to create, if you can't tell, a monochrome that really jumps off the page, and I think I'm getting there, my friends. Now, remember I said I'm going to play with the luminance. I'm, I've found that I've been doing that a little bit later. I used to convert to black and white, play with the luminance, but because of super contrast and how powerful that is, I kind of want to do those kind of things first and then come back. So remember the dominant colors, blue and red, right? So let's go play with the luminance here of the red. I can make it brighter. So the rooftops and lights and stuff bright up, but I want to make it darker. I'm just creating more contrast. Again, it's a moody photo. It's it's pretty uh, pretty intense, but hey, I like it. And then the blue luminance. Let me see what that looks like. If I go brighter, you're gonna get that bright sky. 
which looks really cool, but if you go left, you're gonna get that darker sky, which looks kind of moodier and dramatic. Actually, you know, in this case, I think I'm not gonna use the blue. I kind of like it in the middle, but that is something to play with, by the way. If you've ever seen monochromes where they have like a dark black sky, they took, if assuming there's blue in the sky, they just take the blue way to the left and you get that really over the top black sky. Um, if you've seen that on some monochromes, you know what I'm talking about, but that's a way to do that. I like that on touch, but I like the red coming down a little bit. Here's another tip, my friends, while I'm at it. Go into color. You can play with luminance here. So once again, I've got red, and I can go up or down. If I want to further accentuate that red uh, or those red roofs and bring them even darker, I can adjust the luminance a little bit further. And once again, blue is here too. You can see that I can sort of double up, for lack of a better word. I am going to double up on the red, but not the black, or excuse me, not the blue. And at this point, I think my photo looks great. I'm going to go back to black and white. Let me turn this off. Yeah, see what I'm talking about? Over the top in color, like you would, actually, I kind of like it. I mean, but I like big colors. It, it may turn you off totally fine. It doesn't hurt my feelings if you don't like uh, big colors. Um, I kind of like that, but it is over the top. I, I'm the first to admit, you know, hey, hi, I'm Jim. I have a problem, that kind of thing. Um, it's over the top colorful. But it's kind of fun. Anyway, I'm getting off topic. But converted to black and white, you don't look at that and think, oh, that's just over the top. You just might be thinking, that's a dramatic black and white. That looks pretty nice. In fact, I would be willing to bet some people would look at that and say, I love that fine art monochrome. Um, you would hear that a lot. But in color, no one's going to call that fine art. They're going to say, Jim's a little happy with his color. So, um, my point is you can experiment and get a bit more heavy-handed with your edits in monochromes, and I think people don't care. I think they're fine with it. So usually what I do with monochromes is that kind of stuff, get it all set, and then I might come down here to my favorite, one of my favorites, Mystical, and have a little bit of fun here, adding back a little bit of, you know, it adds a little bit of contrast, a little bit of that mood. You can see how it's kind of doing that. It does create a little bit of a softer focus, but again, I think that looks pretty cool, especially on this kind of photo. If I turn it off, there it is before, and there it is with Mystical, looking pretty sweet. And one other thing I love to do to monochromes is to come into toning and play a little bit with uh, making it a little bit of a blue, kind of a silvery blue, and that is just by getting the hue in the right uh, area for the hat, uh, shadows and the highlights, uh, and then adjusting the amount of it. So. That is just a personal preference. I just kind of like that silver kind of look, but um, and I've done this in a lot of my monochromes, but if I turn that off, there it is, traditional black and white, which honestly, I think that looks classy and beautiful. If I turn on this toning, I made it a little bit silver, and again, you can adjust that by adjusting the amount of saturation in the sh uh, shadows and highlights. I've got just a little bit here. I'm not going very heavy here. In fact, it might be a little bit hard to notice. Another thing I like to do. That's really it, my friends. I was just kind of having a play with a monochrome. Haven't done one in a while. Just wanted to share some tips here about using the luminance slider, both in the color tool after you've turned it uh, into a black and white, as well as in the black and white tool, but also how powerful super contrast can be. And then just kind of having some fun and making a photo that, you know what? I like the photo. I think it looks pretty awesome. One more time, oops, uh, not that one. If I go to black and white and turn this off, I've got a fairly, not fairly, I've got a really saturated uh, color, excuse me, but as a monochrome, it looks uh, pretty awesome. I might would print that, to be honest. I think it looks pretty fantastic. And if I show you the before and after, you can see we really brought up the details. Contrast is really high. Those red roofs are really dark now. We didn't do much with the blues because I kind of left them, but I think we had a, a huge impact on the photo and in fact these buildings that are now white both yellow and white in the previous are looking just super sweet i think that's it for this one i'm just kind of having a play to be honest and just having fun and more than anything i hope i'm encouraging you to go have fun and have a play with your photos my friends check out some of these tools try some monochromes have fun with it experiment get crazy out there if you want to it's part of the fun of photography is just not just taking the photos, which I absolutely adore, but editing them and coming up with something that maybe you wouldn't have come up with on your own. I hope my videos give you some ideas. Thanks for watching, my friends. Tune in soon for the next one because it's coming very soon, and I'll see you in that one. Take care of yourselves. Have fun editing, and adios.